All right, let's take a quick look on how to import an iPhone model to your After Effects using Element 3D. So first things first, um, I have a comp position ready to go. It's got the settings, got everything I need. So if I go open up the comp settings, you can see uh, nothing really crazy here, just pretty standard HD size, 30 frames per second, 15 seconds long, whatever it needs to be, we'll go with it. Uh, the next step is, to, of course, to uh, set up element with the phone. So we're going to go ahead and create a new solid to our composition. So layer new solid. Give it a name. We'll just call this uh, iPhone element. There we go. I mean, I guess we should spell it correctly, right? Uh, lowercase i, capital P. Excellent. And then we'll throw in the element effect onto the solid. There you go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the scene setup here, and we're gonna go ahead and import that iPhone Cinema 4D uh, element to um, our project. So import, I'm gonna go ahead and jump to the iPhone files. You can see I already have them queued up. You can choose any one of these. It doesn't matter which one I pick. I just have the 14 queued up. So I'm gonna select this one. I'm gonna hit click on open. And I'm gonna go ahead and just click okay. Uh, all these settings here are fine. It should bring in all the materials and all the texture maps. So click OK. And you can see, here we go. And if you do get a warning saying that the textures are too big, just click OK. It's fine. They're going to scale down just a tad, and we should be OK. I think what we really need to worry about is the texture for the screen replacement. And you know we want to definitely map our own assets to it. So I really don't care what the actual texture map is being used for uh, the actual screen. Anywho, I'm gonna go ahead and scale this up a little bit. It is kind of small, so I'm just gonna go ahead and run into the scale property of our iPhone object and just kind of scale this up until I see fit. Uh, you can see a little bit of glitchiness going on, but that's because there's some materials in here that are causing some issues. They have a lot of um, triangles and faces that we really don't need. Plus, I really don't need to see this reflective, shiny, whatever screen glossiness that they add to this. Anyways, if I rotate this around, you can see here, it looks pretty good. I, I do see a couple of issues, but uh, we'll go ahead and address, you know, adjust those as we need. Uh, if we go through the uh, texture maps here, the texture settings, you can see there's quite a few going on that we have here. And uh, the, the, one of the major issues is the design that's kind of on top of the screen. And, uh, you know, the phone texture for the screen is being covered by this glassy, uh, glassy, glossy texture. Uh, so if I scroll down, I had to kind of go through and turn things off and on just to find it. So if you just click on this little box here, you can turn off some of these textures to the different areas of your model. And I found out this, this all colors glass was the actual issue with you know, covering the screen of this phone. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Uh, there was also another issue that I was looking into, which is the reflective Apple symbol in the back. And you would think that, you know, maybe we have to go down here and find it, make some changes. Uh, but actually, that's not the case. There's actually a, a cool little property within the camera render settings that we can adjust that will fix this really weird kind of jaggedy uh, camera issue. You can see as I scroll in, it kind of disappears. If I go back to 100%, uh, it looks terrible. So we're going to go ahead and fix that as well. Anyways, uh, if we need to change the color of the phone, it's pretty easy. You know, pretty easy. You just got to find the different textures for, you know, the different parts of the phone and just change the color. So whatever color you want to use, just got to pick on that little orby here. You know, drill down to the basic settings and change the color. I'm going to go ahead and just change something so you can see I'm not lying to you. I think this will be the least amount of change. Let's go up to the top. And I think it's, I think it's this one here. I'm going to go ahead and change this to like a, a blue color, you know, because Apple came out with a new, a new phone color called Frosty Blue. And you can see it already changes a, a lot of the colors within, you know, the back of the phone, which is, which is pretty good. And so the idea is just going through and, and changing, oops, got to click OK, uh, changing the other textures that are mapped to the phone. So like the, the little area for the antenna, uh, the button faces, uh, the, the top of the phone, the camera module glass here. So you got to find those different texture options and change those. 
So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and press undo here just to get it back to that regular color. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to get back to that weird gold color. Anyways, it looks pretty good. And then how do we change this, you know, front face from the phone? So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I already kind of queued it up. I have this iPhone screen that I took a picture of. I just used my phone, took a screenshot. Um, I went ahead and, and Googled, you know, how big is the iPhone screen in pixels, and I just made it the same size. It was like something weird, 11, what is it, uh, 1170 by 2532. I just Googled it. I put it in there, dropped the image in, scaled it up a little bit, and so I'm going to use this. So if I want to animate this going up and down, I have another composition that I can run with uh, separately from the main comp. So anyways, here's, here's my, uh, my composition. I'm going to go back to the iPhone comp, and I'm going to drop it into my project. Here we go. Uh, I'm not really worried about how it looks here. Uh, it, it was just so that I can make some changes. So I'm going to go ahead and go down. I'm going to hide this comp. And back on element in the effects controls panel, we want to make sure that we add this to a custom layer. Uh, we cannot use a layer within our composition to map to our 3D model unless it's defined within our custom layers. Remember, text, masks, and other images or layers can be mapped to the phone or within a 3D uh, space if they're added to these custom layers. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and open up the custom layer section, go to the custom texture maps, and I'm going to go ahead and select layer one, the iPhone screen, here in layer one of the texture maps. So click on this one, iPhone screen, and uh, the source content is fine. I'll click OK, go back to scene setup. There we go. And so now I can map that composition to the phone by finding that material. So I'll scroll down. Uh, pretty easy. It's the rainbow one. So I'll click on that. And in the first set, uh, I guess second set of settings here under the diffuse, I'm going to change the default iPhone screen, what do you call that, wallpaper, to my custom uh, texture map uh, that we just set up before. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this little link here. And go ahead and open up this little drop down. And look at that custom layer one iPhone screen ready to rock and roll. So I'll give that a click. And you can see already that my uh, image or layer uh, nested composition is mapped to the phone. You know, that's looking pretty good. So if you click OK and get back to the main project, you can see it's ready to go. If I were to animate it or put it into motion, so let me just move it up a little bit go back to my iPhone comp, you can see it automatically updates it. So video, uh, an animation, um, you know, fake mobile app, whatever you're trying to show, we could easily go through and animate it within that nested composition. So I'm gonna go back, just set it back to the top, because it's bothering me. There you go. Go back to the iPhone comp here. And yeah, look at that, it's pretty good. So one last thing that I said we're going to address here was that weird Apple symbol kind of being all weird and jaggedy and looks terrible. So there's actually a really cool property here. If we just kind of rotate this phone real quick here. Uh, particle look. Uh, actually, we're going to go to the particle replicator here and get to the rotation properties. And X will flip forward. Y should flip this way. So I think Y rotation. Yeah, there we go. And look at that terrible reflective Apple logo. It just looks terrible. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and move it over just to the left a little bit and um, scale it up a little bit here. Where's the scale properties? Uh, X, Y, Z, rotation. Uh, there you go. Here's your particle size. Make that bigger. Yeah, you can see that just looks terrible. Look at that. So anyways, uh, there's a property here that we you know, buried, buried all the way under the render settings. And if we just go to render settings and go to, yep, yeah, here it is, camera cutoff. For some reason, not sure why, there's this camera near plane property here. If you increase it from the default value of 10, uh, that seems to eliminate that weird kind of glitchiness that you get on reflective material. So there you go. So already that's looking fantastic.
fantastic. Uh, all we need to do is just put this in motion, animate it. We got our, you know, our iPhone set up, create our scene, create our animation, and we're ready to rock and roll. So if we need to change the color, it's all through the materials. You need to add a screen replacement. Make sure you set it up through the composition and add it to your custom layers. Make sure we add it through the custom texture maps. And again, to get that weird reflectiveness that was kind of really jaggedy, uh, again, it's under your render settings and under the camera cutoff. We just increase this camera near plane property, um, something higher than 10 to remove that weird issue with the reflective material. Anyways, um, there you go. Pretty simple. Ready to rock and roll.